Hi everybody, I'm Diana from So Uncommon, home of Build-A-Quilt, patchwork in the hoop. That's right, all this beautiful patchwork you've seen or you're seeing here is made with the hoop of your embroidery machine. It's a great fun technique. It's what I like to call patchwork in the 21st century. It takes away the need of lots of uh, plastic templates. It takes away the need of your quarter inch foot on your sewing machine. Um, it takes away um, the need of squaring up your squares at the end because when you make your patchwork segments with your embroidery machine, you get really precise blocks, which turn into really precise larger blocks and beautiful quilts all the way around. So again, welcome to Wednesday Workshop. Today in Wednesday Workshop, we're going to be talking about three segment pieces that are being used to create this beautiful block right here called the churn dash. Um, you will need um, the build a quilt basics set one and the basic set two because we're using the half square triangle, the square and the split rail segments for this block. But let's start out with talking about this block in general. And I'm gonna be sharing with you some variations on this block and a little wall quilt that I am in the process of making. And you can make it too, once you know how to do this block. So the history of the churn dash, as far as we can tell, um, this block appeared in the 1800s. And I'm being kind of vague there because we're not quite sure what part of the 1800s. But the churn dash was meant to represent the butter churn that we use to make butter. So let's let's talk about this for a second. Have you ever made your own homemade butter? It is absolutely delicious. And all you need, you don't, thank goodness we don't need those big old fashioned butter churns anymore. All you need is a nice metal or glass bowl, your um, hand mixer or like your KitchenAid with a whisk attachment, and heavy cream, or over in the UK, I think you folks call it double cream. It's the rich, thick, heavy cream that you can get. You put it in there and basically you turn it on and you just whip it, whip it, whip it. It can take several minutes um, and it becomes kind of um, sandy, then clumpy, and all of a sudden it comes together and it is the most delicious butter you've ever had. If you like to add a little salt to your butter, you can do that towards the end. If you like unsalted butter, you don't need to do that at all. It's really delicious. I highly suggest that you give it a try. But that is where the idea for this churn dash um, block came from. It was to, um, to uh, represent the churn, which was the vessel that they would put the cream in. And then the dash is the blades on the pole, on the paddle that would go up and down. And when it would go up and down, it would turn. And it is what mixed your, your cream and your butter. Now doing it that way took a good time, a good amount of time to do it. And so thank goodness we have our hand mixers and our standing mixers today and we can do it in no time flat and have yummy, yummy homemade butter. I like to make homemade butter for all the holidays and I like to make homemade butter on Sundays. Um, I always make a nice big breakfast for us on Sundays and I love to uh, make homemade butter to go on pancakes or French toast or waffles or something like that. Alrighty, let's talk about this block. Let me reach down here. I need to grab, whoops, actually it's right here. Um, I made a few years ago, I made three little sizes of churn dashes, the wee baby one, and then this medium one, and this one right here. And you can see how these center sections, I made them longer and that's okay. You can do that with a churn dash but the original churn dash was made with very precise squares. And so that's how we're going to do this one. You are going to need from the Build-A-Quilt Basics one set, you will need the square and you will need the half square triangle. From the basic set two, you're going to need the split rail um, segment. Now, these sets, as you know, if you have them, each one of these sets, all of your segments come in, 
three to four sizes. So what I've done here today is I've chose the four inch segments. And so I have ended up with a 12 inch block. Very easy to figure out that way um, what size your block is going to be. But those are the pieces you'll need from the build a quilt system to make this block. You're going to be making four half square triangles. Those are your corners. And then you're going to make four split rail blocks. Those are go in the pole positions, north, south, east, and west. And then you're going to need one square for the center. Now, normally when you see a churn dash, it's got a white background typically or a solid background. You notice here, I've really gone crazy with this beautiful vibrant print and even my yellow. In fact, let's take it down and I'll show you. There we go. Show you up closer. See, even my yellow is a small print or what I like to call a ditzy print. It's one of those prints that read as solids. We talk about that all the time, right? So if this should typically be a solid, I use that little print. Didn't it turn out great? I love those colors. I just really loved how this came together. I needed some bright color in my life this week. And so when I was making it, those are the ones I chose. In fact, these are going to be the ones I'm going to continue to do for my wall hanging. And I'll, I'll talk to you more about that in just a second. Let's go ahead and pin this back up here. On my little mobile design wall. I love this thing. This is from Ikea. On the other side is a whiteboard. I love it. It's one of the best things I've ever purchased from Ikea. Alrighty, so I'm going to share my screen with you. And as you can see right there, that is the traditional churn dash. Again, four half square triangles, four split rails, and a solid square in the center. And so how this is made is your half square triangles and your split rails are a background color, which is indicated here in the white, and a main color, which is indicated in the pink. Now that main color could be a print if you wanted to do it as a print. There's not a problem there at all. Um, and then your center square is also your background color. That way you definitely see what would be the churn and the dash within that square, right? But now the one thing about the churn dash, like a lot of blocks, if you start playing with fabric color and fabric placement, you can get completely different looking blocks. So let's take a look at variation one. In this variation, we left our corner half square triangles alone, did nothing to them. But for our four split rails, we left the background color alone and we changed the bottom half of the split rail into the red. And that could be any color you like, but we've decided to make it into the red. And then instead of leaving the center white, we put a green color there, just really changed it up. And you can play with your churn dashes and really do that. And this you can see looks a wee bit different than that, where that really looks almost like an outline. It, it really reminds me. I have to say this. If you all have ever watched the movie from the 19, I think it's either like 69 or 70 called The Andromeda Strain, they find this organism, this life form that's an organism, and it's they call it Andromeda. If you take this block and you turn it on its corner, like so, that's the Andromeda from that movie. And so every time I make a churn dash, I'm like, this is my Andromeda quilt, or this is my Andromeda block, because that's what it looks like. But that's what this block would look like if you put it on point in a quilt. Kind of gives it a different look, kind of a very cool different look, I think. All right, let's go back to our variations now. I just had to drop that little tidbit in there because I can never get through this block without thinking of that movie. One of my favorite old sci-fi films, love that film. 
All right, so this is the original. This is variation one where we did a little bit of change, mainly to the bottom halves of our um, split rail and to our center. Now let's play with color some more, but keep the colors the, the same as the original, but add one color overall. This time, instead of leaving our background color, the white in the half square triangles, we switched it up and made it yellow. So our half squares are yellow as our background and our pink. But for the split rails, we left those, except, you know, back in our original, this was pink. We flipped it to the yellow this time. So white background and yellow in all four and left the white center point. But once again, you get a completely different look for this block. It almost looks like you're looking down some squares in a stop sign almost. It gives you a completely different look. That's variation two. Now let's look at variation three, where we really left the colors the same as the original, but we did something completely different. We left our four half square triangles the same. We left our middle the same, but look what we did with our split rail. We made each half the pink. Now, if you're thinking ahead of me, and I bet some of you are, what you notice here is that you could do four solid squares here in the pink. So instead of doing your um, split rail here, do four solid squares if you want this look. Now, this look, I've seen this version of the churn dash and the original version of the churn dash put together as an XO kind of thing for hugs and kisses quilts. It turns out beautifully. But I wouldn't do, in this case, I wouldn't do the split rail. Why, why stitch? Why put together all of that extra if you don't need to. So instead, I when I made this one block in the white, I would make four more of them in the pink. And this would be your O. I've also heard this version of the churn dash called the donut. And it, yeah, it kind of looks like a donut, right? Now, let's take a look. I have one more pictorial sample to show you. And it is the little wall hanging quilt I'm making. It's going to be 36 by 36. And here it is. So what I did, as you can see, I have one, two, three, four of my original versions of the churn dash, but instead of pink, I put them into yellow. I really love that buttery yellow. And since we're talking about churn dash and the fact that it um, represents a butter churn, I thought, yeah, let's use a buttery yellow. But let's look right up here in the corner to what I've done to it for these other five blocks. In this one, I kept the bottom half of my half square triangles as the yellow, but I chose this kind of a pumpkin-y, light pumpkin -y color for the other half of my half square triangle. Now, for my four split rails, I did almost what I did back in this variation, but instead of putting white to the outside and red to the inside, I put red to the outside and white to the outside. So you don't really have a specific background fabric here. And so if you were to go and put more of these together, if we took this one away, and slid this one over. Can you see where red would come into red and you'd get a red square there? These would come in together and you would end up with this one and this one making the look of a flying geese unit. You'd get a whole set of secondary patterns going on. And look what happens right here between these two and these two. It creates this whole other kind of a quarter square triangle in a square kind of a look. That diamond in a square, but your diamond is made with a quarter square. So you're getting, again, a whole secondary look there. I love how this turned out. And so I'm going to be making this. And I think I have enough of these fabrics that, I'm, um, that I've showed you here on the board 
to make mine. If not, I'll have to figure something else out. But I think I do. I think I'll have to choose maybe a slightly different fabric to do these traditional looking churn dashes. But I think it's going to turn out great. I will show you as you go. If you wish to do this with me, it's going to be really easy to do it because I put this picture layout and a churn dash coloring sheet out on the website for free. So you'll see it out there. It will say churn dash uh, block, uh, wall hanging quilt, layout, photograph, and coloring sheet. Okay. And so if you already have your sets, you've got all your instructions on how to make your pieces, your segments, but the coloring sheet will be for the full churn dash block. So you can make a couple of copies and play around with your own color layouts. And I put the diagram photograph kind of separated a little bit. So you see where each segment, where each of the blocks would go and how they each look differently. So you're not confused about what's running into what and what pieces need to be put together. You'll see them fairly clearly. So I've done that. And over the next, let's say over the next four or five weeks, let's see if we can't get this done. I'm going to be working on mine. We'll be doing other things on Workshop Wednesday, but let's be trying to put that together. It'll make a lovely spring wall hanging quilt. Or if you need like a larger piece, what about putting it on point across the back of a chair in a living room or family room? That would look awesome. So lots of things you could do, but it's going to end up being about 36 by 36. Once you're done, you'll make five of the traditional. Let me bring it back up. It'll be easier for you to see. You make five of the traditional blocks or yeah, no, four of the traditional blocks. Sorry, four. And those go in your pole positions. And then you're going to make five of this really colorful version that really, when you look at these two up next to each other, you have to sit there for a second to think, oh, that is a churn dash block because it's not obvious. This obviously churn dash, this not so much because all we did, it's this pattern. We haven't made any position changes of the segments. We haven't flipped a segment. We haven't put one segment at the top versus the bottom. No position changes. But what we've done is changed up our color. That's how you can really go about creating really beautiful original quilts is just by taking a simple block and really playing with the color. And I know you all can do it. I've seen some of the stuff that you've all done. So over the next few weeks, we'll be working on these and I'll show you my top when it's done. I'll show you again once it's quilted, okay? All right, everybody, that is the churn dash block for Wednesday workshop. Kind of quick and simple, but you know, that's what these are about. Talking about how we can use the build a quilt segment system. Um, a lot of you have been asking about that, so I certainly wanted to show you. And I challenge you, go make your own homemade butter. Won't that be fun? Your family will be so impressed, or your friends, whomever, your coworkers, maybe bring in some muffins or scones one day. You don't have to make those if you don't want to, or homemade bread. And bring in a little container of homemade butter. People will be so impressed. I'm telling you, they'll just think you're like a gourmet, a gourmet chef. They certainly will. So have fun with that. Have fun making your turn dash. Turn dash, again, you're going to need your half square triangle and your square from building a basic block set one. And from build a quote basic block set two, you're going to need your split rail block. Okay. Alrighty, everybody, if you need to find the basic block set systems, and I say, folks, really, when you want to be a quilter and you want to use your embroidery machine, this is going to take you a very far way. It's completely downloadable. You can reprint your instructions, keep them like I keep them, keep mine in my folder here. You get all of your written instructions 
um, all of the information that you need. You get your cut sheets that tell you what to cut for a certain finished size segment. All of that information is in there. And with each one of these, you get a full how-to demonstration video that walks through the demonstration of creating each one of these segment pieces. All of that can be found over at our website, sewingcommon.com, along with the um, handouts for the quilt that also comes with the coloring sheet. Now, I have a wee little bit of a surprise. I'm only going to give you a hint, or I'm going to ask you a question. What if you had a whole coloring book full of block patterns? that was a downloadable coloring book so that you could go and download any block that you needed and play with it to design your colors and to write on there what you need to cut what you need to cut for each one of those and then that paper went with you you didn't have to worry about all of your different the way different designers write up their patterns differently and all you could just write it all down over there and do it what would you think about well, we are working on something like that for you guys. I can't tell you any more about it yet, just that it's coming. And speaking of things that are coming, our modified half square triangle set is coming out in roughly 30 days. Okay. If it's earlier than that, then yay me. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, it's coming out in about 30 days. So it's on its way. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me again. There's your website to go and find your patterns. If you're brand new to Sew in Common and to the Build a Quilt system, thanks for joining us. And I'm going to say check out our video here on YouTube about the half square triangle, the mama block of all patchwork, this little block right here. There is a free pattern on our website, which gives you one size. So you don't get all the sizes that you get here, but it gives you one size and it goes with that video. We have another one also for the quarter square triangle. For anybody who's new and wants to get used to how things get made in the hoop, those are two excellent videos. I'll link them in the description for you. I'll put a couple of other videos that you can click on at the end of this video as well. Okay. All right, everybody have a great day. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday is Riley Blake day, right? We're doing the Riley Blake quilt along with the build a quilt system. Those patterns that I've created in the build a quilt system, for those of you that don't know, haven't heard yet are completely free. You can get uh, block one and two already out on the website. But tomorrow, Thursday, we're going to have the next three. So three, four, and five. Next week, we'll have six and seven, and then we'll be caught up with them. We'll be one, Then we'll be at one block a week because we started a little bit later, um, and I want you all to have them. Whether you're doing them now or you're going to do them later, I want you to have them. I don't want you to be forever behind, okay? So I'll see you tomorrow for Riley Blake Day here at Sew in Common. Until next time, everybody, please, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to this website because if you are interested in patchwork and you are interested in doing it in some technique other than a traditional technique, I want you to give the in the hoop process a try. I like to call it, like I said, the technique for the 21st century. It takes a lot of the um, stuff that people find difficult about quilting. And I've been a quilter for over 50 years, so I know exactly what they're talking about. It takes that away and makes it precise, but easy for us to do. At least that's how we've planned it here at So In Common. So please subscribe to the channel, check out our videos. We have tons of how-to videos, like over, I think maybe over 600 of them now. So there's lots of uh, videos out there for you to check out. Subscribe to the channel. We would love to have you as part of the So In Common family. And again, as always, thank you to everybody who has subscribed. We wouldn't be here without all of you. Please like and share the videos so that other folks can see them because um, you never know, you might be the person that made the difference in somebody finding um, a new art form that they love called Patchwork in the Hoop. Until next time, everybody, please have a great day and go so life beautiful. Bye for now.